In this short video, we're going to talk about a special class of differential equations and actually determine a technique or method for solving those equations. You may have seen these in a second semester calculus class. So if we have a differential equation that looks like dy dx is the product of two function, one function only depends on x and the other function only depends on y. We call that a separable differential equation or the differential equation is said to have separable variables. Could also rewrite it by dividing both sides by h of y. Obviously h of y can't equal zero in the uh, interval of solution, and we call 1 over h of y p of y. Now, to understand why this technique works is that we're going to assume that we have a solution phi of x. So in other words, y is phi of x. And so wherever we see a y, we're going to replace phi of x. So we've got the composition p of phi of x, which means that dy dx is phi prime of x. So we're really making a change of variables. It's like a u substitution. Then if we make our substitutions into p of y dy dx. That means p of phi of x times phi prime of x equals g of x. And by doing this substitution, now everything is written in terms of x. And so I could differentiate both sides with respect to x. So on this side, I'm not going to make any changes on the right hand side. It's just going to be the integral of g of x dx. But what I'm going to do on the left hand side is reverse or undo my change of variables. I'm going to replace phi of x with y and then phi prime x dx I can replace with dy. And really that just comes from this relationship over here that dy dx is phi prime of x. And so now I have on the left hand side an integral of p of y with respect to y. And then on the right hand side is the integral of g of x with respect to x. And when we perform these integrations, we only need one constant of integration. So here I have a differential equation written in differential form that's actually going to help us because what I want to do is rearrange the equation so the dy and all of the y variables are on one side, the dx and all of the x variables are on the other side. I've got that equation here. And now I'm going to integrate both sides. I'm going to integrate the left-hand side with respect to y and the right-hand side with respect to x. So the antiderivative of 1 over y is the natural log of absolute y. The antiderivative of dx over 2 plus x is the natural log of the absolute value of 2 plus x. And then I add on a single constant of integration. I'd like to solve this for y. So I exponentiate both sides. So I'll get just the absolute value of y and then e raised to the entire right hand side. Now I can use the properties of exponents and rewrite this as e to the power of c1 times e to the natural log of the absolute value of 2x. So to remove the absolute value signs, I need the plus or minus. Then I can say e to the natural log of absolute value 2 plus x is just going to be 2 plus x. And then this plus or minus e to the power of c1 
I'll just replace that with a single constant, C. Let's look at another example. Here we have an initial value problem. The differential equation is dy dx equals negative x over y. And the initial contention is that y of negative 5 is going to equal 12. So this gives me y dy equals negative x, should be dx, I apologize. Quick change here. And it's easy to find the antiderivatives. We'll have uh, 1 half y squared then equals negative 1 half x squared plus c1. I will multiply through by 2 and gather x squared and y squared on the left hand side. That means it'll equal 2c1. And I'll replace that with the new constant and I'm going to square it c squared because we're going to recognize this as the equation of a circle. So we're expecting x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So the radius of the circle is really the parameter for this one parameter family of solutions. And so let's go ahead and put in the initial condition. When x equals negative 5, y will equal 12. And that gives me c equals 13. So again, this is a circle with radius 13. And we could actually write this equation then as our implicit solution. And its interval, as large as possible interval, is from negative 13 to positive 13. Of course, I could solve this equation for y and get an explicit solution. Now, normally when I solve this, I'll have a plus or minus. But since my initial value, my initial condition has a positive y value, I have to take the positive branch of this solution. And again, negative 13 to 13 is the largest possible interval. I could have chosen a smaller interval which contains x equals negative 5, like negative 13 to 0. Or I could have even chosen something as small as negative 5.1 to negative 4.9. Uh, it's just negative 13 to 13 is the largest possible in interval. So one thing we have to be uh, aware of and take care of when using this method of separation of variables is that we could miss a solution. Uh, anytime we have a zero of h of y, so if r is a zero, meaning that h of r equals zero, then y equals r is a constant solution to the DE. This should remind us of autonomous differential equations. We had a very similar situation where any of the uh, critical points there led to a constant solution. And we might miss this. We have to think about it when we're solving it. Let's look at uh, an example. So we're going to solve this. We're going to use separation of variables. So I'm going to have to integrate dy over y squared minus 4. Obviously integrating dx is no challenge. This one is not that hard. We just have to remember the method of partial fractions. And so I'm going to factor y squared minus 4 as y plus 2 times y minus 2. And so that means I can decompose that as some constant a over y plus 2 plus a different constant b over y minus 2. The way we find a and b is we multiply through by the least common denominator, which is y plus 2 times y minus 1. That gives us this equation. And then by looking at the coefficients, all of the y coefficients on the left hand side and the right hand side have to be equal to each other. That's how I get 0 equals a plus b. And the constants have to be equal to each other. So um, 
1 has to equal negative 2a plus 2b. So we get a little system of equations. We solve that for a and b. And we find that a is negative 1 fourth, b is 1 fourth. So now our integral is broken up into two integrals. And so for the first one, I'll have uh, the negative 1 fourth natural log of the absolute value of y over 2. And the second one, I'll get 1 fourth natural log absolute value of y minus 2. I'll use the properties of logs to write that as a single log. So I'll have uh, y minus 2 on the top, y plus 2, all in absolute values, still have the constant multiplier of 1 fourth in front. So we're not done yet. Let's go to the next slide. So uh, we found that the 1 fourth natural log absolute value of y minus 2 over y plus 2, that was the antiderivative of dy over y squared minus 4 the antiderivative of uh, integral dx is just x plus a constant. I'm calling it c1 because I'm going to multiply through by 4. So I have 4x plus a different constant c2. Uh, then I want to uh, exponentiate both sides because I have the absolute value here. I'll get the plus or minus. I've used the properties of exponents and I'll write e to the 4x plus c2 as e to the c2 times e to the 4x. So this plus or minus e to the c2, I'll just rename that as plain old c. And then I'm going to do uh, some algebra because I want to solve this for y. So first multiply through by y plus 2 get all the y terms on one side, all the other terms on the other. Here we need to factor out y. Here it turns out that there's a common factor of negative 2. We don't have to factor it out. It just makes the solution a little bit easier to read. And we do some final algebra to get rid of the negative sign. Instead of having c e to the 4x minus 1, we have 1 minus c e to the 4x. And so that is our solution. It's a one parameter family of solutions. And if we look at this differential equation, this is an autonomous differential equation. And any zeros of y squared minus 4 are going to be constant solutions. So I'll have y equals 2 and y equals negative 2 are constant solutions. Now the constant solution y equals 2 belongs to this family of solutions. If we just put c equal to 0, I'll get y equals 2 as a solution. But there's no constant uh, which will give us the constant solution y equals negative 2. So no value of c could result in the solution y equals negative 2. And so remember, that's called a singular solution. So we need to look out for those. One final note is that even if we have a very simple differential equation, so dy dx equals g of x, with the initial condition y of x naught is y naught, uh, we may not be able to find an antiderivative of g of x in terms of elementary functions, meaning that there is no antiderivative in terms of polynomials, rationals, radical functions, trig functions, exponential or log functions. So we could try to find a power series solution or we may be able to just use an integral defined function. And so in this case, if we have continuity for g of x, then uh, we can just write the solution in this form. Uh, you can verify that it is a solution. You just have to use the first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus.
So here's a very simple uh, initial value problem. But as you can see, uh, I'm sure you learned that e to the negative x squared uh, does not have an elementary antiderivative. So we can go ahead and use this formula to get an integral solution. So I hope this was a little bit familiar to you from a previous course. Uh, but even so, among our solution techniques, it is one that you should be able to grasp very quickly.